Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Peacemaker. The new show on HBO Max just wrapped up with its final episode. This is the show that takes place just after the events of The Suicide Squad, which is a movie that I loved. The Peacemaker is the first and only time I've seen John Cena in a movie that I enjoyed seeing John Cena in. I was a big time uh, critic, fan, unfan, not a fan of uh, John Cena. I don't think he's very funny in most of his movies. I think, you know, there's a, a few comedies that he was in that I really didn't like. Uh, but him in The Suicide Squad, which uh, a, a, a lot of the DC comic book movies that have come out, in my opinion, are primarily garbage. Specifically, the Zack Snyder movies are pretty shiny pieces of shit filmed in slow motion. Style over substance, 1,000%. Uh, thankfully, James Gunn and James Gunn's sensibility uh, fits perfectly. Fits perfectly for not only the Suicide Squad, which I was a big fan of, but also Peacemaker. Which, even though I liked Su the Suicide Squad, wasn't looking forward to Peacemaker. I was like, oh, more John Cena. It's like they got away with it in The Peacemaker. Finally, a movie... That where I'm like, okay, I enjoy him in this movie, right? He's not, it, I mean, I don't think he's the worst part of the movies that I didn't like, but I, you know, they're just not very good movies. He happens to be in them. I don't know if it's him causing it or just the movies being bad. Either way, not look, not looking forward to Peacemaker. However, it's just like it's. J I, I love it just as much as I ended up loving uh, The Suicide Squad. It's, you know, a great mix of comedy, some amazing fight scenes, really fun take on superheroes, uh, some really uh, unique characters, obviously a rated R type of a story, so something you will never see Marvel doing because it is owned by Disney, you are not going to be seeing any Marvel R-rated anything. Don't hold your breath. Not going to happen. So that's another positive, where you're getting a, a grittier look, some more adult language, some fun fight scenes, some, you know, obviously some nudity, which is always great. Nothing wrong with the naked body. So on that on those levels I really I really enjoyed it. I mean Peacemaker is, you know, the best white trash superhero you could ever have. And he's like Marks checks all the boxes for being a white trash superhero. At least the white trash part. You know, he's got the the super QAnon racist dad big, you know, infowars dad who's like the most toxic of toxic people that that populate this country of the United States represented in his father and John Cena being the the byproduct of that living in trailers you know the dad using the kids as you know as entertainment fighting each other you know like just like all the tox toxicness, toxicity that comes with that kind of a person. Uh, and John Cena plays the peacemaker who is, you know, has all of those tendencies, has all of those conservative, libertarian, racist, uh, ignorant tendencies that they all have. But he's like in a, in a stage of transition where it's like for the first time in his life, he's being introduced to people that are different than him, that are that are forcing him to be more more welcoming and considerate and thoughtful towards people that are different from your your general white people your your white racist people 
of course, this show also has an extremely catchy intro song as well as dance. The dance is a lot of fun, uh, very cheesy. But that's the thing about this show. Not only the cheesiness of the intro and the songs, whatever, it fits. But the, the, the nuance, the masterful nuance that James Gunn, his ability to write stupidity in such a nuanced way where all of these characters have different flavors of stupidity, different kind of uh, levels of stupidity. Uh, they're not dumb for dumb's sake. They're like so many lazy comedies just write dumb characters because dumb is funny. You know, you saw the Ghostbusters remake with the women. Like, it was like everybody in that movie was stupid. Specifically, the straight men in that movie were, like, extra stupid. But even the main characters, even the intelligent women, are written as stupid. Because for some people, being stupid is funny. Same thing with, like, um, Melissa McCarthy's career of being fat is funny. Like, in so many Melissa McCarthy movies, it's just, like, the fact that she's overweight is the punchline. Her being clumsy because she's overweight is the punchline. And it's, like, it's just lazy. Where, where then you have something like this show, Peacemaker, that just is, is expertly dissecting the nuance of stupidity and the different types of stupidity there are, that are out there and even somebody that is it is mostly smart can have moments of stupidity so that kind of that kind of plethora of stupidity and stupidness i appreciate quite a bit in this in this show because it's a breath of fresh air it's not stupid for stupid sake you know it's stupid because Th these people need to grow and and part of their stupidity part of their ignorance is allowing for that growth to happen and not only just from the peacemaker it's not just him realizing that that being a racist piece of shit isn't a, a good thing to be like his dad being accepting of people who have different sexual identities and gender identities and all these different things like, he is a bully. He is in every way a bully. He embodies that bully myth, despite the fact that he considers, I mean, in so many ways, he is so much like the conservative party, where it's like they don't understand that they are the bullies, and then they cry and whine when they get called out on being bullies. Like, it is the, it is the quintessential bully maneuver to, to pick on people until you get called out for picking on people and have to pay for your you, you your your you have to handle you have to deal with the repercussions of your actions then they break down and cry and play the victim and and peacemaker in a lot of ways embodies that where it's like there's a scene where he is notably referred to as a bully but he thinks everybody else has been bullying him his whole life because they've called him a bully. It, it, it's just like that level of stupidity is funny. And, and just kind of calling that out as well. And also knowing that the reason why he is that way, the reason why he is a bully is because of his dad. In many, not only his dad, but a combination of his dad being the, the like, overly racist horrible person he is but also not like he's somebody that's never met he's like he just hasn't met a lot of people he doesn't know a lot of people like like they never whether you go to college or not like generally those years those early 20 years even if you grew up very like secluded and, and like kept away from the 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 infinite amount of types of people that are out there in the world where you just grew up in your trailer park in your in your state in your small town and you've never like experienced all of the infinite ways that you can exp experience this life that we're all living you've never been able to experience that then you're going to have a very shut off 
perspective on everything. Versus if you, you know, when you're young, you move out of that small town. Whether you're going to college or not, but you go, you move out and you, you meet new people and you experience new things and you realize that you, you don't know what you don't know. The Many Faces is an ongoing abstract ink portrait series that I started many years ago. I release a new face every day, but go to inspireddisorder.com to check them out. So many available. But as a listener to The Ray Taylor Show, you can save 10% when you use coupon code INSPIRED when you check out. So go to inspireddisorder.com slash TMF, that stands for The Many Faces. Go check them out, browse the entire collection, and when you decide on a piece, or maybe multiple pieces, make sure you use coupon code INSPIRED when you check out, and you'll save 10% as a big thank you for checking out my work, for collecting my work, and for listening to The Ray Taylor Show. And with that said, let's get back to the show. But yeah, I thought this this show was a lot of fun. Uh, the the helmets are a lot of fun. All the different helmets and they have different powers is is a, a fun aspect to this this superhero. Obviously, heavy metal is a big aspect of it. Part of that white trashiness of Peacemaker and his his childhood buddy, um, God, Vigilante, which their friendship is a lot of fun as well. And an expression of two different kinds of stupidity. Obviously, you know, I don't know. It has all the hallmarks of of the the white trashiness, the the heavy metal, drinking beer, smoking weed, trailer parks, domestic fights, great fight scene in the first episode with with Peacemaker and this rando that he picked up at a bar who ends up being uh, one of the butterflies, which is something this whole whole season is them, this group of people who are like put together, like James Gunn is great at that, whether it's Guardians of the Galaxy or the Suicide Squad or Peacemaker. He's great at, at, at forming these teams uh, of different types of people and having them play off of each other in order to achieve some goal. And their goal is to eradicate this this alien invasion, these butterflies that are invading the world. And it's also a lot of fun because of the type of person Peacemaker is, brutally honest, and also shit talker that he like throughout this whole show him shit talking all of the other superheroes in the DC universe is hilarious because especially after what Zack Snyder has done to all of the DC movies I it's so easy to talk shit about all of these superhero characters so easy because they've been portrayed in such a, a horrible way in my opinion some people love Zack Snyder stuff I don't I do not understand it whatsoever but some people love Zack Snyder stuff so Peacemaker talking shit about Superman spreading rumors about Superman about Aquaman Aquaman having sex with fish is like a running rumor throughout this even the end of the the show it comes up there's some really fun cameos that, that come up at the very end of the show uh and that whole gag you know is is brought up yet again i loved all that stuff you get a lot of moments almost every episode has like a scene where you see john cena like crying you see john cena well his care you see peacemaker crying you see peacemaker like like letting go and dancing to music or playing music on the piano there's all these beautiful like musical moments that happen throughout this the season of the show that really that really display the heart that peacemaker has it makes you really love that character and root for him to not only be a better person but also like just to show that he is a caring person and he is a sensitive person uh but he's just hiding it 
because of all the trauma that he's gone through as a child. So I appreciate like even the 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 piano. There's this, a scene where he's playing a song on the piano. And it feels like John Cena is actually playing because it's not perfect. There are moments in that song where he's like hitting hitting wrong keys. But it feels like it feels like uh, because of that, because they left that in. It makes perfect. I mean, it fits perfectly. This like instead of like nothing is overly polished, like everything is kind of just pieced together to to make to make it fit. And that piano solo, despite the fact that it's it's raw and real and not perfect, adds adds more heart, adds more realism to it and uh, makes me appreciate it more. But it also makes you enjoy and root for peacemaker because it's like you know deep down he's a good guy he's just like has this facade of assholeness that that is forever getting in the way and of course his his explanation for crying is hilarious the the face workout that's that's how he keeps his face so muscular is by doing face workouts which is crying when he tells vigilante when every time he gets caught crying also, the show has, I would have, like, I've only watched this show on my TV, which is like an old LED TV, not great, some off-brand, whatever, cheap, you know, Black Friday deal I got like seven years ago, and then my iPad, which is new. But I have to say, I don't know if it's because of the screens I'm watching it on, or just the quality, but the Eagly his best friend Eagly, the bald eagle, that is like his his sidekick, his mascot, his his buddy in this show. Best animal CG. Most animals, CG animals, are clearly CG. And there's a few moments where it's like, ah, oh, that's I mean clearly CG. But I think the movements and everything is probably the best I've seen which I appreciate because that's another thing. That's another thing I, I, I'm not a fan of when movies do that, when they do, and it's, it's happened, it happens more now than ever. It just seems like studios would rather make CG animals than actually use real animals, which you couldn't use a real animal as eagly, eagly, but even just like animals that are just like running in the background tend to be CG and look completely fake. So I appreciate the show doing a CG character that is an animal that looks the majority of the time believable and real. I appreciate that quite a bit because it's something that I'm critical of in in any movie that has bad CG. Usually it's people, rubber people, where it just just looks bad. And it's, it's the same thing you saw in like The Matrix 2 with the burly brawl. Like a lot of movies haven't gotten past that. They look fake, like fake people. They move like fake people. In this, you don't really see that. It look, it seems like a lot of practical effects, but specifically the animals, specifically Eagly, uh, looks legit. Another thing I'm highly critical of, especially in comic book movies, are the nighttime battles. I was talking about the King's Man last week, which has a nighttime battle. That is hard to see. But so many comic book movies have their main battle, the last battle of the movie, the big battle with the big bad. They're always staged at night and they're always barely lit. They're the most difficult things to see. This show does not do that, despite the fact that the last episode, the last battle, which is great. You see some people, some characters rise to the occasion, which are really great. There's the just amazing, but also well lit. Like you can see everything that's going on. A lot of the fights take place at night or in what would be dark situations, but always well lit so you can see everything that's happening. I loved it. I loved it because so many movies don't do it. 
they do low light fights to hide to probably save money hiding bad cg and in this show you can see everything you can see the fights and the fight scenes are a lot of fun whether it's that first fight scene where with john cena beating up on that petite little hottie or john cena fighting the the little asian dude who is a badass in this movie in this show or just any of there's a lot of great fights in the in the show so many great fights so many gr- great fight scenes um you have die beard played by god what is his name um come on he's the main guy how is he not he's from the suicide squad steve ag comedian steve ag plays die beard or at least that's what he's referred to in this show why is steve ag not there he is oh it just doesn't look like him he plays john economos is his character's name but the way his beard looks uh he's constantly referred to by peacemaker as die beard you know because peacemaker he's a bully and that's how you bully somebody to give him a, a nickname that is making fun of them uh and then bringing it up constantly join inspired disorder plus today head on over to inspired disorder.com slash plus to join membership includes members only discounts and deals you get access to the Ray Taylor show completely ad free as well as bonus episodes. You get access to the complete live painting archive. You also get access to every single podcast ever produced by Inspired Disorder hosted by Ray Taylor. You get access to Ray Taylor's personal blog as well as the opportunity to ask me any questions. So if you want to start a podcast, you're into art, ask me anything. And so many more things are being added every day to Inspire Disorder Plus. So sign up today, become a member, head on over to inspiredisorder.com slash plus and become an Inspire Disorder Plus member today. Steve Agee's character is great. You know, just a small character. One of the tech guys from the the Suicide Squad is now a tech guy in this little group. Uh, You also have uh, Danielle Brooks, who's from, I think she was from uh, Orange is the New Black, I want to say. Uh, but she's the daughter of the kind of the the head person who's like in control of the different superhero missions that is the bad, kind of the bad guy in uh, the Suicide Squad. She gets knocked out at one point, I think by Steve Agee, maybe by somebody else. Uh, but she, uh, uh, Leota... Adebayo is the daughter of um what's her face let me see if it's, i'm sure it's going to show what's the her mom's name her mom's name is her mom because it gets brought up all the time because she is such a horrible person oh man looking it up viola davis amanda waller why is she uncredited? That's weird. Um, she is only in two episodes. But they bring Amanda Waller up constantly throughout this this uh, first season uh, as being just a horrible person. As, as the example of what is the worst type of person. The whole time, uh, which it's a secret, uh, Leota Adebayo is her daughter which you don't find out till later. Uh, but she's great. She's great. And she's somebody that's like, she's kind of like a mole, but she has zero experience. And she's trying to play off like she's, you know, made for this. And it's a great moment at the end, like I said, a great moment at the end of the show where it's like some people rise to the occasion. And it's great. All the characters are fun. You have Harcourt, Jennifer Holland, as being like this badass chick uh that that john cena's christopher smith uh peacemaker is attracted to you got freddie Stor- stroma 
who plays uh, Vigilante, who is like this, he's kind of like this annoying psychopath, <laughs> like really like, like if Disney were to create a psychopath, like really overly cheery, like to a, to a point where it feels like fake, like happy and, and, and friendly, but like cold blooded murderer. It's a it's a, a a great kind of two sides of a, a coin to be like so dramatic and easily like manipulated like a very like I said the the nuance of stupidity and the different levels and different kinds of stupidity throughout this show is is so great and their friendship the vigilante peacemaker friendship is a lot of fun there's a a, a fun scene where they're like. They're like bondings towards the end of the the season where they're bonding and they're like throwing grenades at not grenades but like little sticks of dynamite at each other just playing around. It's it's so much. It's like like very child childish childlike. In a lot of ways, a lot of these characters are very naive. Type of characters, uh, but works for what they're doing. Robert Patrick plays peacemaker's dad who's like the the just the the big bad the the leader of this racist clan of people just a, a bunch of like really fun really fun characters and uh, uh this show i don't know if i mentioned it already uh judo master the fun uh the asian dude played by uh nut lee but one of my favorite, they do a lot of these like post credit scenes. I think all of them have a post credit scene. And they some of them almost feel like outtakes. But some of them definitely are not. But I love them all cuz they are hilarious. And there's this one, this guy, this older actor that plays the captain, Captain Casper Locke, uh played by Christopher uh Heyerdahl. There is the end. I forget which episode it is, but there is a post credit scene with him kneeling over a dead body. And he is trying to it feels like an outtake where he's trying to amp himself up to feel sad in for this scene. But it could also be the character because of what happens with these butterflies and stuff. But it is the best most hilarious scene i think in this entire show is him over this dead body trying to like convince himself to be sad and his face is so expressive like i'm talking like jim carrey level of like ability to manipulate his facial features in a way that feels so overly done that it's perfect like this sad face that he puts on and then is this laugh that he does that's like this this like in, like he's an insane person trying to convince himself to be sad over this dad dead body uh, my favorite scene my favorite scene like i'm re- I, like the scene reminded me reminded me of in the, the movie that just came out uh the nightmare alley the very end of that scene, there's a character who has this, it's supposed to have like this evil, maniacal laugh, like of somebody who's like lost everything and snapped mentally. Played by, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bradley Cooper. In the Nightmare Alley version, in my opinion, I don't believe it at all. I don't think Bradley Cooper is a good actor at all. But what they were going for in that scene, this guy, Christopher Hyardall, Hi- 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 apologize for, but he plays the Captain Casper. In that scene, the laugh that he does would have fit perfectly at the end of Nightmare Alley, which I don't think Bradley Cooper did at all. I don't think he's a good actor at all. But that's like that's what I felt like. It was the same type of emotion, this like insane, like evil, maniacal laugh that is 
understanding that like that you are no longer you're laughing at the fact that you are no no longer a part of humanity that you are now uh, a new thing a dangerous thing to you anyway I love that scene it's like no no come on be sad be sad it's like, he does this face that's amazing and then he does this like laugh like he's trying to cr- cry like he's trying to fake cry and then it turns into like sounding like laughter it's beautiful beautiful like the my favorite scene of the whole show but uh yeah uh i really enjoyed the show i really did it was a lot of fun i'm excited for season two uh it's a show that i put on multiple times just on in the background the the song the 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 theme song for this show is great it plays again towards the the end battle where during the end battle that they have their the the shows uh intro song playing which i thought was a lot of fun uh but yeah check it out if you haven't yet i mean i I would imagine uh a lot of people have if you have hbo max if you are a fan of the suicide squad i would highly recommend checking it out this is a no-brainer if you like that one uh but if you're into like action comedy it's great i mean it, it yeah it's superheroes but it's it, it feels more like, you know, this ragtag group of people trying to succeed when they're not really meant to succeed, which is kind of the, the whole Suicide Squad mythos is like they are they're almost there because there's no no uh, other option. Anyway, uh, check it out. HBO Max Peacemaker season one. It's great. No, f- sad face. <laughs> new episodes of the ray taylor show come out every single day subscribe on youtube and everywhere our podcasts are found binge the full week over at inspired disorder.com slash plus buy ray taylor show merch over at inspired disorder.com and follow the show on instagram at ray taylor show have a wonderful day everybody peace Ouch! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.